meeting to order. Welcome everybody. Um, Legislative and Rules Committee. Um, we just got our agendas, and I'm new, and so are some of us, to this situation. Um, so I'm going to suggest that we table a lot of this, but we can discuss it. I'll go down through it quickly. Uh, but since a lot of you just got some exposure to this, as well as me, just now, that that will move a lot of this to next month. Um, but first of all, is there a motion to approve the minutes of the prior meeting, uh, December 8th, 2015? Move made by uh, Supervisor Wood, seconded by Supervisor Sokol. Although, uh, any uh, discussion? Discussion, Mr. Yes, Supervisor I've been on for a number of years, and I just want to say what an honor and privilege it is to serve under your home. I just oh, well. <laughs> well, well, well thank you. Yeah, well, yeah, you just became my favorite supervisor of this committee. <laughs> okay. Um, so, any further discussion of the minutes? All right, a vote on the minutes. All those in favor of accepting the minutes as uh, submitted, say aye. Aye. All right, the ayes have it, it appears, even though there was only one aye. Uh, so we'll call it unanimous, okay? Uh, the next item is uh, an action item, and it was proposed by me, but not much of the detail is here. So I'm just going to explain it, and then we'll have more detail at next month's meeting, okay? Um, <coughs> fireworks. We approve the sale of fireworks in Warren County. Well, some of the fireworks folks think that the state law, which says that municipalities shall not control fireworks in the way of permits or fees, uh, means that municipalities cannot tell them where they can locate or when they can locate, and so forth. Well, Queensbury, and I believe that maybe other municipalities in Warren County feel differently about that, that the location of the fireworks is important to that municipality in terms of traffic flow, in terms of public safety, and so forth, and in terms of aesthetics. Back in the old days, and one of the reasons why Queensbury adopted a transit merchant law, which does control these incoming uh, retail events uh, was, you, and some of you older folks might remember, tractor trailers used to pull up alongside Route 9 and then just outload what was the contents of the tractor trailer, which would be some beautiful paintings, you know, on velvet of Elvis Presley and busty looking women. Mattresses. <laughs> yes. And, uh, and uh, you know, medieval knights made out of tin cans. All kinds of nice stuff, I have to say. But, you know, the traffic flow and the traffic stop and the traffic accidents led us to adopt the Transit Merchant Law, which controls where they can sell those. So um, the, what I proposed, and Martin Apadu suggested some language, which I don't see here, to suggest that the law where by Warren County adopted the sale or allowed the sale of fireworks in Warren County does not supersede any municipal laws, whatever they may be. Okay, it's not quite. Do you guys feel like you have a copy of what you're looking at? No. No, you don't have a copy. Yeah, shall okay. act no law of Warren County show act to supersede, in this case the fireworks, so supersede or render inapplicable any local law, ordinance, policy, or requirement of any municipality of Warren County. Mr. Chairman, do we have that in this packet? Second. Yes, there's a short the version of what... Local law amending 7 to 8? That's, that's, that's what it. you're... Okay. It make, it does, it's not real clear, but that's what it's doing. It's the thing. Mr. Chairman, I think some of the confusion is coming from what you're, sounds like you're proposing is an amendment to the current fireworks law, and I think that's where the committee, some of our new members, are getting a little confused. Um, it's a local law to amend number three of 2015 on your second page. Number three of 2015, I believe, was the fireworks law. Yes. So what? Well, gotcha. we don't have the fireworks law in front of us. Gotcha. 
that, that's the thing for everybody seeing lost. They're not seeing fireworks lost. They're just well, seeing these two pages. So I just wanted to clarify for those who are confused. And that's why I'm suggesting those kind of things, uh, Supervisor Wood, and what you say is appropriate, that I'll get my act together a little bit more for the next meeting, and we'll have those kind of things for you, okay? Supervisor Sieber? While we're on this topic regarding the fireworks, and I'm glad it's being brought up, um, as you're looking at amending the local law, I'm wondering if this committee would also consider last year informally as a group we passed this resolution, but we required the safety brochures be handed out with all the purchases. We did not specify that within the local law, so there's no way to enforce that when that did not occur. And I'm just asking that while we're looking at amending it, that was the intent of our resolution last year, that we also specify that within our local law. Um, that did become an issue, and then ultimately it became just that stands on the side of the road or wherever would just tape a safety brochure on a table instead of actually, one company did in fact put it on their bags, um, but I think that was something that as a group we had decided on being a good idea, but just did not um, translate into the language of the local law. And so while looking at this, I would just ask that that be considered as well. Okay, are you making that form of motion? If need be, yes. All right, well there's a motion on the floor then to consider for this committee to consider next month, okay, along with this other one, next month to consider the labeling of their packaging with safety instructions? No, not necessarily the labeling of the packaging, but last year what we had asked was that safety brochures at the suggestion of safety the fireworks brochures company be distributed alongside of the fireworks products. With each purchase, not just taped to a table. And that was oh, what and the be intent given out. was. All right. right. If we look back for a minute last year, we'll see that discussion taking place in depth with the companies. Um, but we just didn't put that specific language in the local law. So like I said, when it didn't happen, there was no enforcement mechanism to it um, because we didn't require it. We just talked about it. Okay. So. We didn't have any teeth to our request. All right. So are we clear on that? And there is a second, Supervisor Bramer. All those in favor of adding this discussion item to next month's uh, Legislative and Rules Committee agenda, say aye. 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 Unanimous. Any opposition? No. Unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda is legislation. Um, yes. So you were you were saying though that this was about the location where the sales do happen, not necessarily where people set them off. Right. It is is the marketing of the product okay. itself. That's correct. So do I need a motion to table this to next month's committee meeting? Just carry it up. Okay. Um, the next item, number two, a request from New York Civil Liberties Union seeking support of New York State Assembly Bill A06202A, which would substantially relieve counties of the unfunded indigent defense mandate under which they now labor. So is that clear to everybody? Um, is that something you just got the letter before you, and again, is this something we can deal with at the next month's committee meeting? This will give you and I time to review this, because we just got this today, and that's fine, and I don't see any hurry in why we have to discuss this today. Supervisor Wood? I just want to point out that yesterday, um, public safety, criminal justice, whatever we're calling my committee now. Um, Marcy Flores is there, and she had asked about a letter um, as far as the public defender's office went. Um, there, there's legislation there um, trying to get rid of the unfunded mandate for their officers as well, and she's also requested, um, you know, a letter be sent supporting, uh, I, if not this legislation, then similar legislation. She didn't have all the details, but she'll also be having a letter. Um, do you want me to have that referred over? to see if it's similar to this for next month? Yeah, would you, Supervisor? Certainly would. Because if they're the same, we should just send one letter. One letter. Yeah, it'll, it'll, that makes sense. Okay. Good suggestion. Thank you. 
Okay, can we do that, Amanda? Okay, so is that okay with the committee that we defer this to next month for discussion? Mm -hmm. um, in Roman numeral four, we have referrals and pending items. Um, committee table legislation forwarded by Rockland County regulating the use of drones pending future receipt and review of updated FAA regulations. I'm not sure where we are on the FAA regulations at this point in time. Well, Mr. Chairman, the, co the airport committee will be meeting next on the agenda here. Maybe that's a question that we could address to the, uh, uh, the uh, manager of the airport. Why don't we just ask him now? <laughs> oh, over here. I'm sorry. He's here. <laughs> well, the FAA has adopted some rules and regulations regarding drones. Um, there's still a lot more that has, has to be done. Um, I have updated the county's website. There is some information available there. You can, you can use the link, but it's still very generic at this point in time. Is there any immediacy to um, forward uh, adopting a law like Rockland County has adopted at this point in time in Warren County? All right. Uh, Supervisor Sobel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Why don't we just keep it on our pending list for until we find out some more information, some more specific leads? I agree with that. How does the committee feel? Sure. We'll keep it on pending items. Okay. That seems to be the consensus. So moving on. Committee to discuss increase in minimum wage for fast food, food workers. Um, Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, how does the committee feel? Uh, do you wish to discuss this item at this time, which is uh, item number two again? Mr. Chairman? Yes. What would be the point of our discussion? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, uh, my my assumption would be that we would discuss the merits of the fifteen dollars an hour uh, for fast food workers. Uh, discuss the increase in minimum wage, which I believe is to go to fifteen dollars an hour over X number of years. And I'm not even sure how many years that is. Um, but uh, is that a discussion we want to have, uh, Supervisor Wood? Actually, this has been pending for a number of months on our uh, agendas. I don't know that we have any particular way or say over it at this point, and I don't know that we have enough information to really determine. I mean, we, we have assumptions as to what the impacts may be, but we don't have enough to determine what the impacts actually are at this point. I'd almost request that we remove this from the pending items. We can certainly bring it up later if we need to, but our pending list is getting a little long here. Well, I'll second that. Okay. Uh, Supervisor Sieber? Just as a point of discussion, while I agree with both Supervisor Wood and Gerard, I'm wondering how it came to our committee. I mean, was it a request by a particular supervisor, or is this something that Supervisor Wood might know? Supervisor Taylor requested that we have some discussion on it late last summer, very early <coughs> fall. When it first came out. When it first came out, and it's, it's just been pending ever since. Thank you. All right, well, it seems to be the consensus looking around the committee that we remove this as, the, uh, as a uh, pending discussion item. And should there be renewed interest in this in the future, as suggested by uh, Supervisor Wood, we'll bring it back. So can we do that, Amanda? Eliminate that. All right, item three. We're is moving along. We're running. Is a there a motion on the table? Do we have to do a motion on that? No. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, Supervisor, like it's a good suggestion, but I guess we don't need it. I heard something about a motion. <laughs> item three, committee table discussion on Assembly Bill A8399, an act to amend the Parks Recreation Historic Preservation Law, the vehicle and traffic laws of the and the state finance law in relation to the creation of ATV Trail Fund in order to allow committee members time to review the bill. All right. I haven't reviewed the bill. Has anybody else? All right. Can we move this to next month as well? I think a copy of the bill is in this packet. It's 
Oh, and I haven't reviewed it as of yet, but I will. But item for next time. Okay, can we do that? We'll Is that the consensus of the committee? Okay. Item number four, representatives of Cornell Cooperative Extension to be invited to the next committee meeting to discuss the idea of agricultural districts. Are there any representatives of the Cornell Cooperative Extension? Yes. And would you like to speak to this? Yes. Please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm Jim Seeley, the director for Cornell Cooperative Extension in Warren County. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, it was requested last time that I come to speak about agricultural districts. And as most of you probably know, we have never had an agricultural district in Warren County for a number of different reasons. Um, before I begin, I'd like to introduce a couple of people I've invited. Jamie O'Neill is with us from Saratoga County Planning. She heads of Saratoga County Ag Districts, and Wayne Lamont, as you know, is our Warren County Planner, and he's provided a map for us today to take a look at of potential farmland. First off, what is an agricultural district? Well, I'm going to read the definition from the pamphlet that I'm going to pass out. It's a geographic area which consists predominantly of viable agricultural land, Agricultural operations within the district are the priority land use and afforded benefits and protections to promote the continuation of farming and the preservation of agricultural land. The uh, law has recently changed on this, and uh, interested landowners who collectively, and I score the word collectively, own at least 250 acres of land can apply to be included in an agricultural district. This land can include maple producers, horse operations, nurseries, orchards, uh, and other small farms. So at this point I'm going to pass a map developed by Wayne's department about agricultural land that's on the assessment rolls. And you'll see from the map there is, of those recorded, there's a total of over 1,200 acres of uh, agricultural land. And uh, I firmly believe there are more than that in, in this county. Some benefits of an ag district might include preserving and protecting, encouraging the development and improvement of agricultural land for production of food and other ag products. It limits eminent domain of, or other public acquisitions of farmland. It eases restrictions and regulations on farm operations. And the county and towns can apply for planning grants up to $25,000 for the process. The requirements. I'm going to pass out one more document. It's an overview from Ag and Markets. Farmers need to apply to be in the Ag District. A two-page summary must be submitted on how to create an Ag District and Warren County, how Warren County farmers would benefit from it. The uh, action must be taken by the county supervisors no later than 180 days following submission of the petition to establish a district. Uh, you would have to establish an Ag and Farmland Protection Board. You would have to submit an application to the Department of Ag and Markets Commissioner to create the Ag District, have a public hearing on its creation, and complete an environmental assessment form. So as you can see, there's a lot of work that goes into establishing one of these, and there are also some costs involved. What is the role of the county, you ask? The primary responsibilities for creation, review, and management of the state ag district lies with the counties. Ag districts established by local initiative provide a mechanism for protection of and enforcement of state ag land. Farmers wanting to add their land to the ag application can do so annually. They get applications from the planning department. Plans are reviewed every eight years after adoption, and the land can be added, again, as I say, to the district every year. So the primary responsibility for collection of data associated with this is lies with the counties. Uh, legal notice has to be published, noting time frame, review, dates of public hearings, and contact information. 
There are 53 counties in New York State who have ag districts. You know, I think there's 62 total. Um, I'm new to researching this. I'm not here to promote it. I'm here just to share information and answer questions. Actually, I brought Jamie to answer questions because she's the expert. And Wayne, because if you decide to go forward with this, it's going to be one more thing on his, uh, his platter. <laughs> well, I'm just reading this one. Uh, so uh, that's where I am. Are there any questions about ag districts, establishing ag districts? Did you say that it has to be a minimum of 250 acres? Yes. Collectively. Jum collectively. Oh, Jumism. collectively. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Do they have to be contiguous? No, no. they don't have to be okay. contiguous. Does anybody know uh, what prompted it or who brought it to the table? Uh, I know there was originally an inquiry uh, supervisor Terry Townsend of Hudson Street, uh, thoroughbred farm there. But I just want to remind the committee, for those who are new who are not here, I did request last year to have Nick Rowell from Shell Oil and Water come in. Um, Soil and Water did look extensively at ag districts last year and the formation thereof and some of the impacts because there are certainly, while ag districts are desirable for many reasons, there are certain impacts as well uh, regarding land use and, uh, that you can establish in ag districts. So we do decide to take this up and go further with it. I certainly ask that somebody from Soil and Water be brought down as well um, to talk about their findings. They went, they went around and specifically looked in our uh, county um, as, as well as Nick does the Agriculture Environmental Management Program for the county through Soil and Water. So he runs the farm talks and he knows about all the little farms, and so this has a potential to spiral. Um, believe it or not, we have a lot of tiny niche farms. Um, they're, they're maybe not very large, and they might not be classified as ag, but there are a lot of farms that we started something like this. My concern is, is that it may you know, really, really grow, which is wonderful on one hand, but on the other hand, it has significant impacts on other properties. We want to be aware of that before we go. There, there is a, there is a, 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 a tax advantage to having an agricultural district. So that, I don't mean this in a negative way, but if you go ahead with this, you're looking at a reduced revenue source. Um, I think it's still good that regardless of an agricultural district or not, you can still get that ag exemption on your assessment. Right. Right. So that so just designating an ag district does not change that. Does right. not change. Um, and can someone explain, like, if we wouldn't we put boundaries on the ag district, so we we wouldn't have like people from all over the county unless we put the district on the entire county. You can do it in whatever manner makes sense for Warren County. In Jericho County, when we initially started the ag district back, I think they started statewide in 1971, and we came close behind that. We actually had six districts throughout Saratoga County. So we took kind of the eastern side along the Hudson River, you know, the southern part, and so we had it kind of segmented. And over time, due to the review process, we consolidated it down to two. So when you look at the map of Warren County and you kind of see everybody's a little spread out like that, the 1,200 acres, now you could actually, because it's partial base, so, you know, the, the Maple Farm up in Thurman, the horse farm that she was talking about, and all the land holdings, you know, can be a part of the district. And you could call it agricultural district number one. And even though it spans, you know, several municipalities, that could still be one. And then when you go through your annual review process as more crop up, it may make sense to, to break it into two for review purposes. But it also could remain as one. And that's something that, you know, as time goes on, the county board supervisors, county planning department, and the ag and farm protection board that would be created. You guys could work kind of together along with ag and markets to figure out what makes sense for the county. What's so the advantage to the county? It's good planning, right? Well, right. It's a strong stand that you support agriculture, you know, basically, because the ag district is really protection for the farming community. I mean, that's the one biggest advantage. If there are nuisance complaints, um, if there are neighbor complaints, you know, about manure, dirt on the road, the way a barn looks, I don't know. I find it hard to come up with a lot of things, but um, you know, that's a, it's a layer of protection for the farmer to say, you know, in this town, we have ag districts, and I'm included in that. It's county-supported ag district, but the state recognizes it. So sometimes when you have zoning conflicts, 
Um, you know, let's say a farmer needs to put up a greenhouse because they're going to start a nursery. And the greenhouse needs to go near where the water is available, and it's a well. So, but it's within the town's setback for zoning. You know, if the town makes the farmer go to the zoning board of appeals, spend money to get plans drawn up, that kind of a thing, it could be viewed as unreasonably restrictive when what he really wants to do is put a greenhouse near his water source. You know, in that situation, he could ask Ag and Marcus to just take a review about what's happening, and then Ag and Marcus, you know, would work with the town to come to some type of resolution. But most often times, it has to do with neighbor conflict. Does that mean that um, if, you, if, you have, if you establish it and you have a farm, mm -hmm. And then you decide, well, you know, I'm going to take this 100 acres and make a subdivision of residential. Are you prohibited from doing that? I mean, it's a, in a way, it's a form of keeping open space, I think, agriculture district. But th this would not prohibit that. No, it does not prohibit conversion. Yes, Wayne. Um, the one thing I would encourage the committee to uh, to look at, and when my cursory overview of, of the rules and whatever. Um, Ag and Market comes in as the, basically the arbitrator if there's a conflict. Um, I would find it interesting that when the county attorney comes on board, uh, who has governance, Ag and Market or APA? And I think that, that may be part of some of the issue here. Um, and I, I think it would behoove us to know that answer before you say yay or nay. Good point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there is there a um, I mean we, we've looked at we have what thirteen farms here. I, I I guess I'd be more inclined to really want to look at this if I had thirteen farmers in here saying this is something we like. I I, I mean I I it's it's like the thing with consolidation. I don't know if they really want it. So. Um, Shouldn't, shouldn't we, if we're going to pursue this, shouldn't we try to get some enthusiasm going from the farmers to, to potentially? Mr. Mr. Chairman? Yeah, it requires a, a petition by 10% of the, of the farmers or 500, or farmers representing 500 acres or 250 now probably. But, you know, I think part of this discussion was just kind of information to the board mm -hmm. and if it's something you're willing to consider, then I think people would, would be aware of it and come forward and either say they want it, they want it, or don't. But for all of us, this is kind of like new territory, uh, except for Saratoga County. <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, so this is just kind of an exploration of an idea and what the ramifications might be and what the process is. That's all we wanted to do today. All right, Supervisor Leggett. Thank you, Wayne. During my campaign, one of the questions that came up in public debate is the stand on agriculture districts. And coming out of Chestertown, you you wouldn't think you'd get that, but there is an interest in that. I would recommend that this committee look into the de development of an agricultural district for Warren County. Um, yeah, we're certainly looking at the plus and minuses of it. Well, let's and discuss it. Yes, yeah. and, and uh, Jamie, are there downsides to this? I mean, you are taking away control of the local municipalities in some situations? In some situations, although, you know, to be frank, we haven't had that many conflicts in Saratoga County. Um, you know, I mean, initially it might just because it's new and everyone's trying to figure out how it works. Um, but we really haven't had that many conflicts between the zoning and planning and everybody kind of kind of works it out. And when they realize that these farms are located in, in an ag district, then, you know, it, it kind of becomes more agreeable. I think, um, I don't think it's a downside, but I think that, you know, when you have an ag district and if you were ever to try and put uh, public infrastructure, uh, you know, that runs past these farms in the ag district, you know, you do have to file a notice of intent. Um, and it's basically just a more thorough review of the project at hand, you know, done by the Ag and Farmland Protection Board, the County Board of Supervisors. So on the farmer's side, I think they feel like they have, you know, another avenue to be heard when, you know, public infrastructure is going through. It doesn't necessarily get in the way of uh, eminent domain either. I know we just brought that up quickly. You know, if roads and things have to be built in that kind of situation, I know sometimes that makes people, I mean, just the word eminent domain makes people nervous. But, you know, there is a process and a procedure, and ag and markets would be, you know, alongside.
like the, the municipality and the Ag and Farmland Protection Board to review all these things to make sure that even if a road and things are necessary to be built, that it's the, it's the smallest impact to agriculture, um, you know, that it can be. Um, Supervisor Sieber. I think um, given the fact that we have a request from Supervisor Wood and Supervisor Lega, it, this is important to the towns up north of our in our county and also obviously we see some ag representation in Queensbury. Um, but, you know, they're coming to the table asking us to look at it. I think that Supervisor Wood's request of soil and water as well as getting an opinion from our newly, ele or newly appointed <laughs> county attorney is warranted. I'm just wondering if we could have, you know, a lengthier discussion with some materials provided to us um, before our next board meeting or committee meeting to discuss this in a little more length. I know I've learned a lot today and I think it's an important issue to our county as a whole. Yeah, that's what I planned on doing. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, as a representative of the John, I, I, I think you... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I just wanted to say, e even though there aren't any farms in Glens Falls, it's important to Glens Falls that we have farmland in our county that's protected. And, and if this would benefit the farmers, I can see merit to this, yes. I, John, I think the, the one big question that, that Lloyd uh, raised is where, where is APA on this? Because yes. I mean, everything that we're gonna do to try and make things a little better for a farmer could be null and void with, with APA's jurisdiction. Well, that's part of the uh, council's review of this would be to look at that one element. Yeah. I think maybe. Supervisor Brock? Um, yeah, I have a friend of mine who lives in Argyle. Well, he lives, well, anyway. Uh, his brother owns a farm. And I, my question is that what happened is they own the farm, and then somebody put a development in next to it, or near the farm. And then the residents who moved into it began to complain about the smell. Would this, how would that, as I, as more county becomes The county has an extension committee. Would this be something that comes up in front of the extension? We can certainly discuss that. And maybe that's something that should come out of the extension committee to the rules um, committee when it's ready to do so. I see a lot of heads in my committee shaking yes. Um, <laughs> well, I sit on that one too, so <laughs> I, I, could, I could see it being taken up there and coming back instead of the Legislative Rules Committee struggling with uh, the whole nitty-gritty of uh, Ag District, if it could 
come up a little bit more refined with a, a proposal to the legislative and rules so that all the heady work can be done. Absolutely. <laughs> Makes sense. I guess I have a, I'm on the Soil and Water Board, so I've got to do my. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, we have the environmental, uh, the Ag Environmental Management Program that we run through Soil and Water, which we run through, that's essentially a county funded agency. Um, you know, we, we do appropriate for them in the budget. They handle our hazard mitigation, they handle our wastewater, they handle our runoff and erosion. I almost see that as a good marriage with farmland and you know, there's often concerns about erosion, water management, those kind of things. I have nothing against Cornell. I'm just wondering is is I'm not really sure exactly sure you I've been on Cornell and that's not something normally we discuss at no, Cornell. No, no, it is this is brand new. I'm I'm not saying that you guys wouldn't because I'm sure you'd happily do so. I'm just wondering if we, we shouldn't look at both Cornell and soil and water and maybe evaluate which one's the appropriate one. I'm sure either one would be happy to have a look at it. I'm just trying to think of where the, the best fit is going to be with the, the right experience. I know Dr. Philly has struggled. Um, their staffing has been low in the last few years and in a big project like this might be difficult. I'm not, I can't speak for him, but it certainly wouldn't be easy. Um, I'm sure with limited staff resources. So I just want to throw that out there for the committee. Um. So you're recommending that this go to the Cornell Cooperative Extension Committee? And I only say that because I don't see a committee for the Soil and Water Conservation District, and they are the workhorse in the county. They and are. It, and it is an appropriate spot the for county, a lot of this discussion to come out. But I, what is the... The county, of, um, the chairman appoints, uh, Supervisor Thomas is the chairperson. I sit on it as uh, a county representative. I know Mr. Montesi is on it as an at-large. Um, Representative, and then there are representatives from farms and um, different avenues throughout the county that sit on that board. Um, and we do meet, it was yesterday at 1 o'clock, <laughs> so we, we do meet monthly. Actually, one of them is a farmer for the uh, tree farm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's why I say we've had some of this discussion regarding ag districts and the pros and the kind that's been going on for the last year there. So it seems to me appropriate fit there, just because this conversation's ongoing, they're all a little bit. Um, up to, to speed on it. Um, I know they've got some good information about farms and farm lands. Like when I look at this map, uh, and Wayne's right, they're all agricultural, but I don't see uh, Toad Hill Stud Farm, the big giant maple producer in Thurman, is not on this map. But that's because a lot of their property is not considered agricultural per se. They're not getting the agricultural exempt. They're more in a, they use a forest kind of thing. So we're missing. Um, the map is, is certainly good for agriculture, but there are other farm activities that are not necessarily using the agricultural exemption or classification at this point. So I think that we could be getting into a lot more farms than we actually realize. <coughs> and I know that they have they have that information at Soil and Water already. They started to assemble it last year to have a look at this, which is why I'm promoting sending it over there, just because I know they've, they've already gotten a jump on this. Um. Yeah, is my uh, goat cheese lady on this? Yes, she, she's here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't worry, we didn't miss her. We didn't miss you. Jim? Um, it certainly sounds appropriate, so I don't want her to take the lead, but Cornell is certainly willing to come to the table and sit and offer any resources we may have to, to help promote it. Or discuss it. Okay, when does the Cornell Cooperative Extension Group next meet? We don't meet until... Cornell or soil and water. We don't meet until February 29th. Okay. When would we be meeting next month? Are we going to the what the uh, first Wednesdays and the second Mondays? Yeah. Starting in February. So. So that'd be the first Wednesday. So I think it needs to move. It'll be months. Well, first Wednesday is February 3rd. February 3rd. I'm thinking that this committee would like to hear what Warren County Soil and Water Conservation District has to say about mm -hmm. agriculture districts. I'm hearing 
that this committee would like to hear what uh, county council has to say about agricultural districts specifically how it might impact APA reviews and so forth and I'm hearing from this committee that they would like some feedback from the Cornell Cooperative Extension and get their review and advice. So that's what I'm hearing from this committee. And just one point, my concern is the makeup of this committee, three Glens Falls, four Queensbury, and then two up county where I think it would have the most impact. I, I would like to make sure, I know Frank's here, that all the supervisors that run those districts are aware that this is moving forward and that they have time to do their diligence and under, get an understanding of what it is or isn't so that they chime in because it would be extremely important to me moving forward their feelings is when Evelyn and Craig has chimed in, you know, what it does and how it functions. And I certainly would be supportive if they understood it and, uh, and everyone, you, you know, we weren't late on, I know it, we have one in Luzerne so Jean needs to know and Oricon, uh, Matt, etc. So I just like them w well abreast of where we're headed with this or that they need to look into it also or ask questions. Yeah, I'm not sure how that would happen. No. Ours is the third Monday. I would just say a simple email to them uh, under that guideline that we are entertaining looking at agricultural districts and it would impact their jurisdictions and that feel free to ask questions or chime in but you know procedurally they can check with John or this committee as to where we're moving forward and, and when presentations are begin or where they could get answers at Cornell etc if they have questions that, that's all I'm looking for so they know they've been contacted and they can look at it it's a good suggestion Supervisor Gerard John, the Soil and Water meets on the third Monday of the month. Well, I, what I'm thinking is we'll bring this discussion up in March. That will allow some of this process to happen. Right. So the process that I want to happen, and Amanda, I don't know if it's you or Paul or who does this, we would like Soil and Water to speak to us at our March meeting about agricultural districts. We would like to have county council review local districts specifically and how it might impact the APA. We would like to get some feedback and review from Cornell Cooperative Extension in reference to agricultural districts. And at our March meeting, we want to assure that the supervisors who would be most affected by the formation of agricultural districts are informed of the meeting and the topic in our March uh, Legislative and Rules Committee meeting. Okay? All right? Not to belabor it, but Supervisor Wood brought up a very good point that there are 13 listed here, but there are a number of operations that would fall under the Ag and Markets Law definition that are currently not here. And, and might, how many properties get a force exemption or, or something? Oh, there's a lot. Right. I mean, those we have not plotted, and they they could technically be considered part of, the, of an ag district. So, I think I don't know. Everything, we with everything that I speak used to own, everything that, that <coughs> Mitch Bryan used to own, uh, Sweet Lumber Company up in right. Warrensburg, they have tremendous holdings. That's all under some either the 480 or the 488. So, I mean, there's a ton of them out there. Right. Um, and they may not go to an agricultural uh, identifier by the the assessor. Uh, because of tax purposes, but they are, by the definition in ag and market law, they are eligible to be included <coughs> in the district. So I think when you look at 1,200 acres or whatever it is, I mean, it could be exponentially beyond that. Frank, did you? Yeah, so the water did have a presentation by uh, some gentleman a couple years ago about ag, ag districts. Mm -hmm. My recollection
downside. Well, there might be downsides to it, and um, you know we'll have to consider those as well as move, we move forward. But I suggest that, uh, given the four items that this committee wishes to pursue, as I just listed, uh, I think we're ready to move on to the next and last item. Uh, we are holding up a uh, county facilities meeting. Thank you for the opportunity. All right. Well, thank you, Jim, and thank you, Wayne, and thank you, Jamie. You're welcome. Okay. So, okay, with the committee, the last item is is asking us. It's a referral or pending item. There's a petition for redress of grievances to consider an alternate form of county government. Um, you know, I, I'm certainly not prepared to speak to this issue. I understand that I thought Mr. Garrity was going to bring somebody in from the state to discuss various forms of county government. And um, I don't see Chairman Garrity here to speak to that. But is that a discussion that you want to do now, or is that preliminary thoughts, or, or what, Supervisor what? I prefer to wait. I know that the Chairman did say that he was going to reach out and try to get somebody to come in. And also, um, and I just actually got a hard copy today, so I read this over briefly as the meeting was being started. When I read this, I don't see anywhere in here where it says address an alternate form of government. I, I don't actually see that anywhere in here. I um, get it. Well, that's my language. Okay. Well, I, have to admit. I know that that's been kind of the discussion, and when I look at this, it, it appears to me reading through it, and I could be completely wildly off base, but when I look at this, it under the whereas, is, if you're in the second whereas, it says whereas the votes are not weighted for the purpose of subcommittee meetings. So when I read this redress of grievances, my take on it was that the w votes are weighted for the monthly board meeting, but they're not happy because the votes are not weighted for the purpose of the subcommittee meeting. So I know there's been this legislature, board of supervisors conversation, but when I read this redress of grievances, I don't see that. I don't see that as being listed as the issue here. The issue that I see listed here is that the votes are not weighted for the purpose of subcommittee meetings. So if we want to truly address exactly what this redress of grievances is asking us, in my mind, we need to discuss why the votes are not weighted for the purpose of subcommittee meetings. So that's purely my take on it, and one of the reasons I'd prefer to wait, because there is some lack of clarity there, at least for me. Um, yeah, I think there is. Um, well, what's the consensus of the board? Yes. Well, the risk of you saying you were going to do this anyway, um, perhaps waiting um, until we do hear from NISAC next month. I know that's what Chairman Garrity said he was going to do in terms of the presentation. Gives us more information and time to review the information we were handed out. Okay. Provided by the committee. Yeah. Uh, Supervisor Garrett? Just, just for the, does the change in structure that we've added more members to the committee, et cetera, does that address it in some form or manner? And then if votes were weighted at the committee level, does that suggest a, a fix for that? That's one item on the table I think we should look at. I'm definitely in favor of waiting. Uh, the other thing is our, our council will be here at future meetings, and, and I'm certain that there's probably a plethora of laws that we're going to have to have looked at as well. So I think it's wise if we wait. I think it's wise if we wait too. I mean, I've had some preliminary thoughts about this too, but and there are pluses and minuses, and um, uh, so we need to discuss this in depth. Today is the first meeting with me as chairman, and it's the first meeting with some of our supervisors in this committee, and um, so tabling this till. Um, Supervisor Siever, are we going to have enough time following the uh, NISAC meeting? I mean, if we're supposed to be the first Wednesday of the month, which Supervisor uh, Montesi said is February 3rd, is that enough time? I don't think that schedule's starting until March. Oh, is it? 
Well, I, I think given March, it would give us enough time to kind of talk, review material, and you know, get a weigh in from our communities and then come back to the table. And like I said, Supervisor Garrity was supposed to bring somebody in too. Supervisor Sofal? Sure. And I don't think legislative met every month. I think it was when there were issues that need to be discussed. So yeah. I don't think your time frame is. So it looks, it's looking to me like March would be better. I, I yes. think uh, Aquario was the, the fellow that uh, Garrity was going to bring in. He's the executive director for NISAC. And, uh, and, his, and I think uh, Kevin's thoughts were that he would explain the towns, the, t the counties that have the Board of Supervisors and the counties that have the legislative, the pros and cons of it. And interestingly enough, um, I think Montgomery County seven or eight years ago changed from a board of supervisors two to a, a legislative. Huh? Two years ago. Oh, two years ago. All right. Mm -hmm. And and it th that would be for us that would be an interesting thing too. Why did they change? How did they change? And how do they like it? I, I think those are the kind of things if we're talking about this legislative board that we should be inquiring. It would be nice if somebody had uh, connections up there and they could kind of talk to this committee about what happened. Uh. Yeah, actually, I'm working on a case right now with some Montgomery County legislators. Yeah. So I have a little bit of a connection if you wanted me to talk to them. That would be great, yeah. Yeah, well, I think, I think this committee wants to see everything put on the table and then ultimately we'll have make recommendations to the board. Um, Mr. Whitehead, you wanted to speak? I just wanted to second Mark uh, Westcott was the one that put in the petition. He put Eight years ago when I was with the DEC, they were just starting that process. He agrees with everything that was said here today. He didn't expect that uh, this was something that would be discussed and, and decided in the very near term. And he would like to see more discussion over the months, and uh, so I think he'd be in agreement with what he heard here today. That's why I wanted to say. Okay, thank you. All right, so, Enter. Yes. Yeah, I was going to have. Oh, there we are. Talk to Steve Porter at NYSAC. He he reached out to me, so I was going to see if he couldn't come in to the February board meeting. If you think it's appropriate to do it in full board meeting in February or March, come in and, and lay out the three different units for some county uh, board. Well, if you want them in February, I'll either now or later, it's going to be a board discussion, so I why not? I'm going to try to get them in. I was just going to wait to see them at NYSAP next week. Okay. So we'll put it as a tentative discussion item, and it looks like more so and more so that we'll just have a March meeting, and we'll be placed in the first Wednesday of March. No, it's actually going to be the first Wednesday following. March 23rd. Okay. So how does the committee feel about deferring this uh, uh, with the idea we're going to learn more between now and then as a discussion item at our March meeting? Sure. Okay. Uh, any other discussion items? All right. Uh, motion to adjourn. Motion by Supervisor Wood, second by Supervisor Gerard. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Nays? Unanimous? Yeah. Germans.